Um, um, once again, and we um, invite you to share the Easter message with us. Um, you, know, you know, let me not start off too deep. Let me kind of start off light and go from there. Uh, you most here, and like everybody here, is old enough to contend with the truth of life, and what life is about. When you're little children and you learn about Santa Claus, it's okay, and it's fun. But then as you get older, you put that away. And you begin to think of the reality, what life is really about, what things are really about, what compassion is about. There's nothing wrong with Easter bunnies and eggs and flowers and singing songs and going out and uh, visiting and having dinner and all that stuff. In fact, it's very nice. It's a beautiful day. There's absolutely nothing wrong with it. It's everything wonderful about it. But we've missed the reality of it. We've totally lost the meaning. And the story and the meaning was carved into the sky by a divine intelligence literally millions of years ago. And we've, we've never learned it. And so you have faith. And you have faith basically in a story that somebody else told you. You're not having faith in the story. You're not having faith in Jesus. You're having faith in what somebody else told you. Because they heard it from somebody else who told them, and they heard it from somebody else. And they read it in a book that they don't know who wrote the book. But they read it in a book. And most of them never realized that this book that they read it in was written in Greece and is loaded with Greek mythology. And so we've opened the book and we've taken the Greek mythology literally. And not only do we miss then what this means from a global and universal standpoint, we've missed what this means from a human standpoint of ourselves. We don't have the slightest idea what it means. The entire story of Easter, Passover, the entire story of Jesus, of Krishna, of Buddha, of Tammuz, of Adonis, of Addis, of all of the gods of Mithra, of Osiris, of all of them, is summed up in those few words that we've been speaking around here recently, which I've tried to get you to understand, which is the essence of all life. The sun goes down, and the sun comes up. That's it. That's it. There is nothing more than that. That's everything. And every single one of the characters of the Bible, of the sutras, of the Vedas, were sun gods. They all portrayed the sun, including Jesus. And let me show you why. And I have a handout. It's not a very nice sounding thing, but I have something to give you. I'd ask you not to read it until we read it together, because I want you to see. Would you? How this was carved into the universe <laughs> long before you ever read it in a Bible. And I'd ask the uh, bunnies who are handling it, uh, the ladies who are handling it, to go as fast as you can. It's Easter. <laughs> and, um, gee, you know, we were up, we had dinner last night in New York, and we walked by this store. You know what they had? And I, I mean, this is the best part of Easter. They had these great big chocolate rabbits. Did you ever remember those oh, things? Yeah. I mean, Joan says, do you want one? And I said, no. <laughs> and I really did want one, except I would, I would get a solid chocolate bunny headache, you know, because that, uh, that's what chocolate does. So I says, no, I won't do it. So anyhow. All right. Uh, do we have enough? Yeah, I, I'm, I'm sure there's enough. Everybody has one? Okay. Let me show you why everything happens the way it does and how it happens the way it does. All right? First of all, if you look at the very top of this page, it says in, uh, it talks, 
Do you have one down here? You don't have one? No, I'm still handing out. Oh, you have one left? Well, you keep that. If you look at the very top of the page, talking about the stars in the book of Genesis, the Bible says in Genesis 1.14, let there be lights in the heaven and let them be for signs. There you are told in the first page of the Bible that the signs that will be given to you will be seen in the stars. I didn't write that. Now, you see, if you have, did you bring, do you have Bibles? Did you put one, you know, for me to tell you that is one thing. For you to see it for yourself is another thing. So I'd ask you to look at page one of the Bible, okay? And if you look at page one of the Bible and you go to verse 14, Genesis 1, 14, and God said, let there be lights in the firmament of the heaven to divide the day and the night and let them be for signs and for seasons and for days of the years, but let them be for signs. So if signs are going to be given to you, you're going to have to understand where it says the signs are going to be found. Okay, let's go. We're going to start a journey. And the journey will be a journey of involution and evolution. And the journey starts here in the month of September. The sun begins its journey from Virgo. And look what the confirmation is on the right side in Isaiah 7, 14. The Lord himself shall give you a sign. Behold, a virgin shall conceive. So the first thing you want to do is look for the place that the Bible said you'll find the signs. Where does it say you'll find the signs? In the stars. What star is called the virgin? Virgo. It starts in September. In November and December, the sun enters the constellation called the cross. It's called the Southern Cross. It's actually called Crooks. This occurs on December the 21st, which is the shortest day of the year. And to the right it says, now from the sixth hour there was darkness over all the land until the ninth hour. Because in the Bible, when the Christ went on the cross, there was an eclipse. And there was darkness over all of the earth. On December 21st, there's darkness over all of the earth. It is the darkest day of the year because the sun has gone through the cross. Do you understand what I'm saying to you that in the, if this had changed or this was different and on December 21st the sun entered the constellation Taurus the bull, the story that you have in your hand would have been rewritten and Jesus would not have been crucified but he would have been gored to death by a bull. Three days and three nights in the tomb, the winter solstice, December 22nd, 23rd, and 24th. The sun is in the bowels of the earth for three days and three nights. And look what it says in Matthew 12, 39 next to it. There shall be no sign given but the sign of the prophet Jonah. As Jonah was in the whale three days, so shall the Son of Man be. S-U-N. Three days, three nights in the bowels of the earth. Born in a manger. The sun is born between the horse and the goat, between Sagittarius and Capricorn. Thus it is born in the stable. And Luke 2, 7 says she brought forth her firstborn son and laid him in a manger. In January, February, 30 years after his birth, Jesus entered the water of the water man, John the Baptist. Luke 3, 23, Jesus himself began to be about 30 years of age when he started his work. And 30 days after December 25th, the sun enters the sign of the water man, Aquarius. And it says in Matthew 3.13, Jesus came to Jordan and to John to be baptized. So the sun is born on December the 25th, and then it begins its evolutionary process up, and it enters into the sign of the water man, Aquarius. If you turn the page over, it says in February, March, after being in the water, Jesus selected his disciples from the fishermen. The sun moves into the sign, Pisces, the fish. And it says, Matthew 4, 19, follow me and I will make you fishers of men. April and May, Jesus becomes the Lamb of God that takes away the sins of the world. The sun enters the sign Aries, the Lamb of God that takes away the cold of the winter. When you walk out of here today and you look on the trees and you see the blossoms and you look and you see the flowers and you look and you see the new life as it's bursting out on every branch, it is because the sun has entered that which is the Lamb of God to take away the cold of the winter. And you have now entered the point in your life and in your season where you pass over from winter to spring. It is Passover. May, June, Jesus rises to sit at the right hand of the Father, and in the northern hemisphere, the sun goes to the eastern sky or to the right side, and summer comes to all the earth. And in John 1.29, it says, Behold the Lamb of God, which takes the sins away, the sin of the world. 
And in May, June, in Matthew 26, 64, you shall see the Son sitting at the right hand of power. And if you were to look right now astrologically on a cosmological or astronomical chart, you would see the Son sitting at the right hand of power. And then you would look down and you would see all new life bursting forth on the branches and in the bushes and in all places where the life is given on the earth. In July and August, the sun concludes its journey in the sign of the lion, Leo. And in Revelation 5.5, 5, it says, Behold, the lion of the tribe of Judah. And then the process starts all over again. Don't you see? The whole story was in the stars millions and millions of years before there ever was a Jesus, before there ever was a Bible, before anybody ever started to put stories on paper. And why do all of the God-men come down? Why are they all born of virgins because the Son is born out of Virgo? Why are they all killed because the Son enters the cross? Why are they all entombed because the Son goes into the earth? Why are they all born on December the 25th because the Son is? It's... It's created in the universe, and there's a reason for it. And we'll cover the reason. And so the sun comes down, and the sun, look, look, listen to me, real quick. You know that Kundalini is seven chakras. The sun comes down, and then it raises itself from the solar plexus in your body, down the spine, to the solar plexus, the place of the sun. Then the sun must rise back up to the brain to touch the pineal gland to sit at the right side. That's what this is all about. The sun comes down at birth and it must, by the crucifixion in meditation, rise back up the spine to that which is the pineal gland of the brain. The seven chakras. Look, go to page 1005 in the Bible for just a minute. Look at Revelation chapter 5 and verse 1. And this entire kundalini or the uh, energy that comes down through the spine and raises itself back up to touch the right hand, uh, to touch the right hemisphere of the brain is described in Revelation chapter 5 and verse 1. And I saw in the right hand, that's the right hemisphere of the brain, of him who sat on the throne, which is the higher point of your mind, a book which is life story written within, within you, and on the back side, sealed with seven. How many? This isn't, the Kund this isn't the Hindu Vedas you have in your hand. It's a Bible. And do you know what? The people that read the Bible haven't the slightest idea what that means. And do you know what? You and I never even saw it. Why does it happen? Look. Look with me, please. June 21st is the longest day of the year. That's one. July is two. August is three, September is four, October is five, November is six, December is seven, December 21st <laughs> is the shortest day of the year. The sun energy comes down to the solar plexus and it's winter. When the sun inside of you comes down to the solar plexus, you go through the winter of your life. You call it depression. Don't call it depression. Understand, the sun is down. And the sun must rise. December is one. January is two. February is three. March is four. April is five. May is six. Back to the top. And when it comes up to the seventh chakra, it touches that which is June. It is the longest day of the year. There is more sun around the universe than any other day because the sun is risen. And when the sun rises from the solar plexus or your lowest part up to that high place within you, then you become enlightened. Then things look good. Then new ideas, new things start to come into your life. It has nothing to do with heroes in a book. It has nothing to do with myths written to try to instruct you. It has for you to leave religion, leave doctrines, leave groups, leave associations, and embrace nature. And if you embrace the sun, God will appear to you from the sun. If you embrace a pussycat, God will appear to you from a pussycat. If you embrace life, God will... You see, 
religions are to be believed. And once you have something that you have to believe, you then have to defend your belief. Even if it's wrong, you will draw your sword against the other and you will defend. God does not have to be believed. God is to be embraced. God is to be experienced. God is to be you. <coughs> the sun comes down, and as Ernest Hemingway said, but the sun also rises. It's true. And you don't have to be a theologian to know June to December back to June. And you don't have to be a theologian to know that in June it's hot and it's beautiful and the sun is out and the days are long, but in December it's cold and it's dreary and the days are short. But when the sun also rises, then there's new life. That's what this is all about. I, I sat, I this last week, and how many times have we sat in meditation and at the end of meditation, I've told you about light beings who are coming to earth. I can't tell this to many people. I don't even know sometimes if I can tell it to you. It's just <coughs> tough to hear this stuff. You know, we have been so put to sleep by religion that when anybody talks about these things, the first thing you think, this guy's a screwball, he's in a cult or whatever. I'm talking about light beings who are coming to earth. And I'll tell you what's so hard for me in dealing with you to talk to you because I know them. Now that makes it even a little more wackier, doesn't it? And how do I get you to understand that the most important thing that's happening today has nothing to do with what you think is important. It is these who are coming to earth who you will recognize and you will remember. And I sat and watched the television the other night and on channel 13 they were doing this scientific look at crop circles and so forth and they talked to these people who in Europe somewhere said they sat at night and in the darkness of the night saw these shafts of light coming from all directions and touching the earth and just watched them come down, watch them come down, watch them come down. How can I convince you? I can't convince you. But remember, a hundred years ago, nobody could convince you of computers or calculators or television sets either. But they're here, aren't they? You have to stand up. Oh, the cross, the crucifixion. The cross is like this. It goes from September to March, or is this part of the cross where the days are equal in length. December is here, where the day is the shortest. June is here, where the day is the longest. That's the crucifixion of the universe. Do you honestly think that the God who created the ocean, the God who created the beautiful wonders of the universe, could not figure a way to deal with his problem unless he tortured a person to death? <coughs> your, your religions made that one up, but they made it up by misinterpreting Greek mythology. The region that the Christ is crucified is because the Son of God goes to the constellation, the cross, on December the 21st, the shortest day of the year. Now, let me tell you something here, and, and some of you may be visiting, and say, boy, whoa. it's okay. I've had a lot of people say, boy, whoa. You know, that goes on all the time with me. But remember something. To know the truth is not to lose faith. Easter is of the goddess Ishtar. I-S-H-T-A-R. Pronounced Easter. Where it came from. It talks of her communion and union with her husband and concert, the god Tammuz. The word Tammuz means 
the sun. The people of the Bible really did not understand the ones who wrote the Bible in the Old Testament did not understand the relevance of this from a spiritual standpoint and you'll see that if you turn to page 683 you'll also see the origin of what you call Lent in which people give things up for 40 days like candy bars or going to watch the Mets play or whatever <laughs> they do <laughs> My kids give up spinach for Lent. No, I ain't eating. I'm giving it up for God. <laughs> okay. That's fine. But I want you to look at page uh, 683. And if you look at Ezekiel 8, you'll look at, you look at what is called the origin of the word Lent. Ezekiel chapter 8 and verse 14. And he brought me to the door of the gate of the Lord's house, which was towards the north, and behold, there sat women weeping for Tammuz. And what they used to do, they used to put ashes on their head as a sign of humility, and it was called Count Forty. It was 40 days in which they would go into a uh, mourning for Tammuz. Why? Because Tammuz was the sun god who had given his life. What does it mean? The sun is down. The sun is in the bowels of the earth at the winter solstice. Right. Okay. Now, the origin of sunrise services is also part of this, that you have a lot of religious groups getting involved in that in this day. And this comes from here. If you look at Ezekiel chapter 8, where you are, verse 16, and he brought me into the inner court of the house at the door of the temple. Between the porch were about five and twenty men with their backs towards the temple of the Lord and their faces towards the east, and they worshiped the sun towards the east. Now, what you have people doing is going down to the bay here up on Arnegut Bay and having a sunrise service. For what? To watch the sun come up. You can get up every day for the rest of your life and watch the sun come up. The problem is, don't look for the sun to come up over Barnegat Bay. Look for the sun to come up within yourself. You have to look inside to see the sunrise service. The myth of uh, Ishtar and Tammuz is from Babylon, Assyria, and dates 4,000 B.C. In other words, Easter was celebrated 4,000 years before Jesus was born, if Jesus was born. Tammuz, as I said, is the sun god, as all of these people are sun gods. And he's also the god of vegetation and agriculture, which reminds us of, of these trop, crop circles. And this is what Tammuz was referred to in the ancient Babylonian myth. He was referred to as the shepherd who gave his life. I want you to open page 875. And you know what I tell you? Some of this stuff may shock you. And that would be very foolish if you just sat on it and said, well, Bill said so. <laughs> that must be true, Bill said so. That's more nonsense. You, if you're really interested, should get yourself down to the library and get a book and study this stuff and look at it. And then come back and say, like a lot of people do, you know, you were right about that. Well, I don't make this stuff up. And, and I don't originate it. I read it. <sighs> Look at John, uh, as I said, Tammuz was called the shepherd who gave his life. Look at John chapter 10, if you would, on page 875, and look at verse 11. I am the good shepherd, and the good shepherd gives his life for the sheep. And why is that? Because if the sun does not go through the cross on December the 21st, there will be no sheep. There will be no flowers. There will be no trees. And do you know what? If you don't allow the crucifixion to take part inside of you, there will be no sheep. There will be no flowers. There will be no life inside of you. I don't care what you do. It doesn't make any difference who counsels you. It doesn't make any difference what books you read. It doesn't make any difference... Where are you going? What I am telling you is happening on this earth now is happening, and what I am telling you is you must put the electromagnetic fields to work inside of your body, or no matter what you do, it's all over. 
you'll do what everybody does. You'll get old and you'll die. You'll never have known. You'll never have to be transformed because this is an electrical process that takes place with inside of you. And you don't have to come here for the process to happen. You can do it at home. You can do it in a car. You can do it on the john. You can do it under your bed, in your bed, wherever you want to do it. You do it where you want to do it. But the point is, I will tell you, most of you who do not discipline yourself to go somewhere to do it, don't do it. Because you know how I know? Because I don't do it. Unless I discipline myself. I will be here. I will be here on Tuesday nights and I will do it. I will discipline myself to stop somewhere wherever I am in the car and just say to myself ten times, God, 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 and just stop. You have to. Because otherwise it doesn't work. The sun won't come up unless the sun goes through the cross. It can't happen any other way. Tammuz was both the son of Easter and the husband of Easter. What does it say in Matthew 3.17? God says about Jesus, this is my beloved son. But in Matthew 9.15, Jesus is also referred to as the bridegroom. He is the son. He is the husband. He is the son. Now Easter is connected to the planet Venus. Easter is connected to the planet Venus. And she was the most venerated deity of ancient Babylon, Assyria, along with the goddess Aphrodite. Now, let me show you why the story of Easter is so beautiful. Let me show you why the story of Easter is your story. And the story of Easter is the story from which all of the godmen and whatever, have taken and lifted. Easter descended into the netherworld to resurrect Tammuz, The spirit must come down through the spine to your solar plexus to bring the sun back up. That's what she did. That's what Easter did. And when Tammuz came back and resurrected, he resurrected from a gray colored egg. It was the first egg coloring. <laughs> Everything you do, folks. Everything you do, you do it because of this couple from Babylon, Easter and Tammuz. Everything you do. And you know what they had in the temple on the day besides the ladies in their bonnets? Chicks and eggs. I don't think they had jelly beans. I, don't, I didn't find any record of that, but you know. Now this is interesting. This is the day that Christianity has accepted as the most holy day of the year. It's the holiest day of the year. It's wonderful. But how many would ever dream as to the identity, and don't some of you let it out because I've already told you, of Easter's mother. Do you know what Easter's mother's name was? Oh my God. <laughs> Anyhow, sin. Sin was Easter's mother. Isn't it amazing? This is my holy day. I celebrate the daughter of sin. It had to be that way. I mean, you know, somebody's got a great sense of humor somewhere. And I know pretty much so. Great sense of humor. But what is it about? This is what it's about. Sin is the moon goddess. You get a book on mythology. The moon represents the emotions. Okay. When the desire of the emotions, which is the daughter, Easter, okay, the desire of the emotions changes to bring its attention down 
to that which is the sun resting in the solar plexus and will come down to bring the sun back up to the pineal gland of the brain. There will be new life in you. But before there can be that new life in you, there must be the desire of your own emotional nature to do that. Do you say? If you don't have the desire, Easter, of your emotional nature, sin, the moon, you won't do it. Just make it, you won't. You won't do it. So, Easter sweeps down into the underworld to find Tammuz, the sun. When you come into meditation, the emotional nature has brought you here. The desire is to go down into the soul of your being, to the solar plexus, and allow the sun to rise and sit at the right hand of the Father so spring and summer will come to your life. That's what it's all about. See? So Easter comes down. As Easter started to come down, she was met by the guardians of the gates of the lower world, and she received permission to come down, but she must descend downward through the seven gates. The sun must come from June, July, August, September, October, November, December, January, and come back up. But before it can get around to renew itself, it must come down the seven gates. The energy that comes down from the brain comes down the solar, that down the seven chakras, down the seven nerve centers of the spine, and hits the. And you know, you say, "Oh, there's a lot of stuff. Oh, Hindu stuff. There's Buddha stuff. This is occult stuff." Oh no, go back. There's a green book on that ledge back there that talks about healing, and there's an article from the New York Times written by scientists from the most prestigious universities, and they talk about the pineal gland of the brain, how it is activated, and they say it is activated by energy which rises up nerve centers in the spine. So what have you got to do? Easter starts to come down and she comes to the first gate and at the first gate she loses her crown. She lost it. You lost it. You gave up your wisdom. You gave up your intelligence. You gave up your traditions. You gave up your religion. You gave up your, oh, I know what it's all about. Crap. And she comes down to the second gate and she loses her earrings. You're not listening to the things that you used to listen to. You're not listening to the people that you used to listen to. You're not listening to them. And you know what? Amazingly, you don't really care what they think anymore. <coughs> and I'll tell you why it's so healthy to get away from them. Because they don't like one another. <laughs> they don't like... And you know what? There was a peaceful Krishna and a peaceful Buddha and a peaceful Mohammed, and a peaceful Jesus. And it came out to be Hinduism, and Buddhism, and Islam, and Christianity. And they hate each other. And they'll fight with one another. And they'll attack one another. And they'll even drop bombs on one another. So you take their names and write them, and then take an eraser and wash it all away. And you've lost, I don't want to hear. Do you know, when you have a belief, you have to defend it. But when you enter within yourself to experience, it's you and God. You don't have to explain it. You don't have to defend it. You just have to experience it. Because anything that you have to say to somebody else about it will come from that still small voice that starts to talk within you. And Ishtar gets to the third gate, and she loses her necklace. The neck is a bridge between the physical and the spirit, and it's cut off. There is no longer any connection. 
This is a fall. Now you're starting to fall. Now you've lost that which was the God crown. Now you've lost that which was your ability to hear the things of God. Now you're losing that which is the bridge to the higher place. Reverse what I just said a moment ago and go back to where you're going. Now you're going down. The crown was that which you had when you come into life as a baby. You were one with God. You lost that. The earrings was those instructions you received from God inside of yourself. You lost that. The necklace was the bridge that you had from your lower to your higher. You lost that. She now comes down to gate four. And she loses the ornaments from her breasts. And the milk no longer flows. The truth no longer flows. And she comes down to gate five and she loses the girdle from her waist. And she comes to gate six and she loses the ankle, uh, the bracelets from her ankle. She now comes to gate seven and she loses her robe and she is naked. And unless you're willing to come down those seven steps and be like that, you'll never be able to raise the sun. Everything she had is gone. The sun in June, why there's, there's warm water, there's trees blossoming, there's roses, there's, there's beautiful lawns, and there's little baby sheep, and all of these things, and the sun starts to come down, and everything starts to go away, and the trees and the leaves, they're not green anymore, they start to get brown or yellow and red, and then suddenly they wither and they fall, and then when the sun has made its way all the way down, down to the solstice, down to December, it is naked, it has nothing anymore, it's gone, it's all done. But the only way that Easter could send and get Tammuz and bring Tammuz back up was to come through the seven gates and give up everything that she had. Everything that you think of. Think of what it is that's so doggone important and think within yourself, you don't have to give up your house, you don't have to give up your kids, you don't have to give up your clothes, you don't have to give up going to the movies, you don't have to give up any of this stuff. You have to give up that which is within yourself. You have to turn off that listening to the outside. You have to turn off that, that all of these physical things that are spiritually connected to the outside. And you have to just allow them then to give of themselves to where you have absolutely nothing. You sit in absolute nothingness in your meditation and you sink down to the very bottom of your being to where the solar plexus is. Just like Adam and Eve, they were naked, she was naked. In other words, you no longer have anything. You have given up everything inside of yourself in the meditation. And when she comes all the way down, Easter is imprisoned. And she then picks up all kinds of emotional problems, all kinds of diseases, which are the fate of human beings who have fallen down the seven stairs. Every single one of us in this room have fallen down the seven stairs. You have to. As Buddha would say, such is the nature of things. Right now the sun is climbing. It has April, May, and June. It has three more stairs to climb. But then you know what? It'll fall down the stairs. <coughs> the beautiful point is that you know that when the sun falls down the seven stairs, it will climb back up. What I am trying to make you understand is that when you fall down the seven stairs, you'll come back <coughs> up too. The sun also rises. And so, when Easter finally makes it to Tammuz and all of her nakedness and all of her barrenness and you finally make it down to the solar and all of your nakedness and all of your barrenness and all of the thoughts are gone and you find it says at that point that the God said, Easter and Tammuz now must be set free. They wouldn't set Tammuz free until Easter came. They wouldn't set the sun free until Easter came. Mm -hmm. and they won't set the sun in you free until Easter comes. Until the female spirit within you comes down. 
And then at that point, the water of life is poured over Ishtar, which means the truth. And both of them then rise together. And at the point where the sun touches the lamb Aries, they celebrated the great resurrection. Easter had brought Tammuz, the sun god, back and presented a great colored egg to the universe. And from that egg, Easter allowed Tammuz and he resurrected into new life. And do you know, every bit of it is true. The story of Easter is a fact. And you can live it in the sun. You can live it inside of yourself. And you must live it. And you must understand it. And so, the Jesus is the sun. And the sun is betrayed by the Brothers, as Joseph was. He's betrayed by who? By Scorpio. Judas. And the Jesus goes on the cross of December 21st. And it says, And there is darkness over all the face of the earth. And the sun god goes into the tomb of the winter solstice. Three days and three nights. And it says on December the 25th, the sun god was reborn, certainly. The sun is born on December the 25th. In 30 years, he steps into John the Baptist's water and he says, touch me. And 30 days after December 25th, the sun steps into the water of Aquarius. And he walks out of the water and he looks and he says, hey, I'll teach you to become fishers of men. And the sun enters into the sign of the fishers, Pisces. And then he ascends up to sit at the right hand of the Father. And the beautiful part of this is, what did he say? When he says, hey, I'm not a man, I'm you, I am inside of you, I am the solar energy, I am the sun god who dwells in your solar plexus, and if you allow me to be crucified by my hands and feet and side, the five wounds of sight, taste, touch, smell, hearing in your meditation, then I will sit in that tomb of meditation, but then I will rise. I will rise again, and I will rise up to the pineal, up to the lamb Aries, and then I will sit at the right hand of the Father, and I will give you new life. Because in John 14, 20, it says, at that time you will know I am in the Father, you in me, and I in you. Before we wrap it, let me tell you real quickly about some other sun gods, Adonis, was celebrated annually in Egypt, and Adonis was the son. It also means Lord. And Smyrna was the mother of Adonis, and the gods turned Smyrna into a tree. And one day, there was a, an earthquake, and the bark of the tree burst forth, and the infant Savior issued forth. And the infant Savior was born from this beautiful tree on December 25th. Adonis represented the sun. And Adonis was killed for the sins of the people. And he resurrected on March 25th at the eve of the spring equinox. There's one other savior I'll tell you of. Where is this stuff? Attis. Attis died for the sins of the people. And Attis was buried. But where Attis was buried, not bad, there was a beautiful tree. In fact, I think the tree was more like this. And Addis laid in the tomb, and Addis allowed his spirit to rise out of the ground and up into the tree. And that tree was never touched. But every year, the people would celebrate Addis by taking a tree and taking it to their home. 
and celebrating the date of the birth of Addis with the tree of Addis love, which was December 25th. Why are they all born on December 25th? Because they're all sun gods, and the sun is born on December 25th. You want to stand up? Just in case this tape happens to find its way to the Southern Hemisphere, what do you have to say to those in New Zealand and Australia and whatnot about the seasons and the sun being born in December 21st? I was wondering if you could... The stories are all written on the basis of the Northern Hemisphere because that which is descriptive of the mind as it appears in the body is in the North. In Israel and all of those places of Egypt were in the Northern Hemisphere where the stories were written. And even if you go down to the Southern Hemisphere and you go to Key West, <laughs> it gets dark in December at 4 o'clock. But in the summer, it stays light. But you have to understand allegory is written on a principle of science and nature. And when you're describing that which must come from the southern part of your body to the northern part of your body, then it is descriptive of that which happens in the northern hemisphere. And I hope the tape does find its way <laughs> to somebody. And so anyhow, Addis remained three days in the earth and so forth. And Well, anyhow. All of these that we've talked about this morning and that I've showed you about the sun are stories of the fall down the seven gates of the physical to resurrect to the seven gates. And the sun does it. You know that because you watch it, because you experience it, because you live it, because now you're getting to the point where you will go out and it's warm and it's cozy and it's beautiful in the summer of your life, but you know that you're going to have to put on your overalls or your knickers or whatever you wear in the winter time because the sun will be down. But it's more important than that to know that when the sun goes down, inside of you and it can happen tomorrow the sun can go down and there will be darkness in your life and you have to wait until the sun comes up but the sun will come up the mother of God gave Attis a starry hat but Attis fell in love with the lower flesh and lost his creative power of the right side. He represents the human mind and his mystery is concerned with reattaining his starry head. Can I tell you one last real quick story? It takes about 20 seconds. It's about another mythological character that you may never have heard of before. His name is Odin. He hanged himself on a tree for nine nights, which signifies the human mind, as you know. He hung from the branches of the world tree, but the interesting part is, while he was hanging on the tree, he sacrificed his life for the sins of the world by piercing his side with the sacred spear. And the blood flowed and the water flowed. The myth of the dying and resurrected God, man, and spirit is the winter solstice, it is the spring equinox, it is the pineal gland and the solar plexus, it is Addis, it is Adonis, it is Jesus, it is Krishna, it is Tammuz, and it is Easter. And of all of those who dramatize more truly what happens to the sun, and what must happen within you? It is the feminine principle, the daughter of sin, Easter, whose desire beyond anything else was to go down deep into the bottom part of the pit and take the sun and raise it back up to the Father's house. And when we look out today and see on this Easter that again she has done what she is to do without and within, and there is new life, and there is new color. Behold, all things have become new. And my deep prayer 
is that you will have heard what I said about light beings very carefully and understand that I'm telling you the truth about what is about to happen on the earth and that you listen very carefully about Easter, about Jesus, about all that I've tried to tell you. There is sun in the sky, there is a sun in you, and both of them can only bring summer when they have been crucified and raised to the solstice back up to the Father's house to sit at the right hemisphere. Make it your life for your children, for the sake of the universe, for the sake of all that is new, all that is life, all that is God. Your rendezvous with God within yourself. Happy Easter. Bye-bye. <laughs>